Welcome, my friends, to the vault. I don't know if this is paranormal or not. I was too chicken to check. I'm a middle-aged mother of four adult kids. I'm an avid horror fan and frequently listen to true creepy stories on YouTube while driving or cleaning the house. That's me. Now for my incident. We live in the boondocks, four miles from the nearest paved road. That usually doesn't bother me. I like the solitude. Three weeks ago, I had to give my eldest son a ride home from work. He works nights in a convenience store, and his car is currently in the shop. So I volunteered to pick him up at midnight when he got off work. So, at 11.30, I grabbed my keys, soda, and phone, and headed out the door. The dogs are barking, but that isn't unusual. They frequently spend half the night barking at opossums and raccoons that managed to just stay out of their reach, so I didn't think much of it. I got into my car, which was parked under a tree at the end of the driveway, near my daughter's camper, and started getting myself situated, plugging in my phone, finding a video to listen to, and clearing a cup holder from my soda bottle. When I started hearing a tap, tap, tap coming from the back of the car, it was a light tapping, as if somebody were tapping with just their fingertips, but it was constant. I froze. Then, the car doors unlocked. My car is an Aveo, and the locks frequently lock and unlock on their own, so this seemed more inconvenient than supernatural, but it added to my near panic. I reached over and locked the passenger doors, so the car relocked the doors on the driver's side. The entire time, I still hear the tapping on the back of the car. As soon as all the doors were locked, I started the car and pulled forward about 20 feet, and the tapping stopped. I put on my seatbelt, told myself I had spooked myself with some creepy stories, and drove into town listening to more stories. I waited in the car for my son to come out after work. When he did, I asked him to check the trunk for me. He looked at me quizzically, so I told him I was probably being silly, but I wanted to know if there were any smudges in the dirt as if an animal had been on it or anything. He looked, then came back to the front and asked me why. I told him about the tapping and his face turned grim. You'd better come around here and look at this then, he said. I went to the back of my car and saw four streaks in the dirt as if someone had drugged their fingernails through as I pulled away. We booked it back to my house, checked on everyone inside, then searched the camper, property, and woods surrounding the house. We found nothing. We went out the following morning to see the scuff marks in the daylight and see if my husband had seen them before. Although the rain that morning had been light, it was enough to wash away the dust it did reveal, however, a few other things. Water beaded around the marks, as if they had been made by something oily or greasy. Also, there were thin scratch marks left behind. My imagination runs wild, wondering what might have snuck up on me after I got in the car and left oily scratch marks there. As you can guess, we'll be installing motion sensor lights around the property now. My kids work second and third shift, and I don't want them out there alone in the dark. I've had a few strange things happen to me during my years, and I'll get around to writing about them eventually. 
but the first one I remember was the visit from two goblins. Now, I know you're going to say, oh, you were only a kid, or you must have been semi-awake and still dreaming. But this has stayed with me for more than 50 years, and I can still see these creatures in my mind as clear as when it first happened. I was about five or six at the time. We lived in a Victorian terraced house, what we call here in England a two-up, two-down, which is basically two bedrooms above two downstairs rooms, a front parlor for best and family visits, and the main living, dining family room. The only addition was a single-story kitchen wash house tacked onto the back, and the outside toilet, privy, was out back of that. There must have been, and probably still are, many thousands just like it up and down the country, not at all spooky from what I remember. As we were both very young, my older by five year sister and I shared the back bedroom, with our parents having the front one. My bed was in the corner furthest from and parallel to the rear-facing window, with my sister's bed just the other side of our shared bedside table, and between that and the bedroom door. My habit was to sleep with my back to the wall, so I could see the whole room pretty much in one view. This just helped set the scene. On the night in question, I awoke to see what I still vividly remember as an imp, goblin, gargoyle type figure clinging to the wall near the ceiling, near the chimney stack and heading toward the diagonally far corner. As most kids would do, I pulled the bedclothes over my head and pretended to be asleep, whilst still unable to take my eyes off this thing through the tiny gap I left. He could have been no bigger than 10 inches tall and moved in a jerky manner like a skitter stop look around repeat moving maybe a few inches in one movement and seemed to have no difficulty supporting himself by clinging to the wallpaper with his claws i remember thinking that it looked as if it were lit by moonlight from the window but we had curtains that were always drawn closed at night grayish with sharply defined detail its skin was like one of those sphinx cats although I never knew they even existed at the time. You know, like stretched over its bones, smooth but supple and slightly baggy at the same time. It had no wings that I could see, and had big pointed ears, large eyebrows, and eyes. Just to say, we didn't go anywhere much beyond the end of the street at that age, apart from to school and back, along streets just like ours. So... My known world was very small. I had very limited experience and couldn't have conjured it up from a memory. It's only been as I've got older that I've come to recognize the same things on church masonry and as modern garden ornaments. As it got nearer to the corner and then around onto the window wall, I noticed a second creature near the other side of the window from the first. This too was jerking its head around shiftily, as if on lookout for anything coming. Now, our windows were the old-fashioned sash ones, which were two part and slid past each other in an up-down direction, with a rotary latch at the middle which stopped either half from sliding up-down. As the two things met up on either side of the top frame, just under the curtain rail, and the curtains were open, the second one pushed down on the top section of the window with its rear leg foot and slid it down a few inches, wide enough for them to climb out. With one last scan over their shoulders at the room in general, they both climbed out and slid the window closed from the outside. They then both disappeared from view, I suppose up and over the guttering and onto the roof. I lay awake for a long time for fear that they would come back, but must have dropped off back to sleep eventually. The next morning, I debated whether to mention what had happened to my parents, but I chose to keep it to myself for fear of ridicule. I never thought to check the window catch, as I was way too small to reach that high on the window anyway, 
and was always warned about climbing on things and the dangers of falling off furniture. So I just got on with kid's life and pushed it to the back of my mind, chalking it up to a bad dream. For many, many years, I kept this to myself. But a couple of years back, I was visiting my sister and recounted my experience during mutual reminiscences of our early childhood home to finally unburden myself of the secret. When I'd finished, she just said, Oh yes, them, with the emphasis on them, but that they were something that shouldn't be talked about. She wouldn't go into any further detail or answer the questions that came into my head and waved it away with a sudden change of subject. Whether or not she had seen the same things that same night or had her own experiences with them is still unclear. I certainly never saw them again after that night, and our parents moved us to a newer home across the other side of the city soon after. What they were, or why they were in our room that night, I will never know, but they were sneaking around for some reason. Perhaps my awakening put paid to their intentions, and force them to make a hasty exit. I do hope so. This happened directly to me. At the time of the story, I was a 12-year-old male who lived in California. For a summer trip, my family and I flew to Boise, Idaho, for a week to stay with cousins. We stayed at their house for two days. Then came the best part. It was the best part, until what happened, that is. On the third day, we drove to a small city in the Rocky Mountains of central Idaho. They owned a cabin in Ketchum. The first day was fishing at nearby lakes, playing games, and meeting a few of the neighbors on the small street. Everyone we met was nice. It was amazing. I thought nothing could go wrong. Before I say more, here's a layout of the area. The room where I slept was at the back of the house. There was no fence at the back of the backyard because it was on the bank of a freezing cold river. Directly on the other side of the river was a huge mountain covered by a thick forest of pine trees. A small path starts on the other side of the river, but there's no bridge. There is one a quarter mile down the road that's in front of our house. I went to bed that night. I woke up at 2 a.m. needing to go to the bathroom. I got up and did my thing, then headed back to my room. As I got into bed, I felt hot, so I opened my window. Not 15 minutes after I opened my window, I heard the most terrifying screech come from the forest. It was raspy, but high-pitched. I know for a fact it wasn't human. I've heard stories from horror narration YouTube channels that often describe creatures that make weird noises that sound sort of human, but aren't. I heard it once more, but this time closer. In the morning, when I woke up, we explored around the town. At 7 p.m., my sister, my cousins, and I got permission from our parents to go explore the forest. I was uneasy, considering I had heard creepy human-like noises in the night, and it was nearing night. My oldest cousin Alex, who was 16, took a loaded pistol, a lighter, and a backpack of snacks. I carried the hunting knife and a flashlight. The cousin my age, Julia, took just a flashlight. My sister, Brianna, and the other cousin, Karina, who are 10, took some extra batteries and a small bag of candy each. We made our way across the bridge at the end of the street and back to the path on the side of the river across from the house. All of us began the hike up to the top of the mountain. We made it to the top of Bald Mountain in an hour and a half. The view from 9,000 feet was incredible. At 8.55, 
Alex and I figured it was time to head down, and ordered the group to the path. At this point, it was dark now, and the sun had fully set. Julia and I turned on our flashlights and shined them ahead as we walked. Some halfway down the mountain, which was about 45 minutes into the walk, I got the dreadful feeling you get when you're being watched and followed. Seconds later, something that was hiding in the bushes a few yards into the tree line that bordered the path ran off on our right. I brushed it off as some type of small animal. About five minutes after the incident, what we heard made me tingle with fear and my heart drop into my stomach. That same horrifying screech from last night echoed through the forest from a mile or two away. I told everyone we needed to move faster, and we did. It went off again, but closer. Again, closer. Whatever that thing was, it was moving faster than us. We were full on speed walking by then. That still wasn't fast enough because soon the screeching stopped and we heard loud steps 30 yards off to the right. I got that feeling of being watched again. Alex took his gun and fired two shots in the general direction of the steps. The creature backed off, but even though we thought he was gone, I still sensed we were being watched. As the river came into sight, it caught me and everyone else by surprise. I heard the path gravel crunching behind us. I looked back, and in the darkness, I saw the outline of something that resembled a human on the path behind us, about 200 yards of distance between us. I told Alex, and his face went pale when he looked. We told the rest of the group quietly, and on three, we all broke out into a run towards the river. Whatever that thing was, it was extremely fast. When we reached the river, there wasn't time to get to the bridge a quarter of a mile further along the river because this thing was catching up fast. We jumped in and swam across the ice-cold water. It got to the river just as we made it up the bank and into the backyard. Julia and I shined our flashlights and finally got a good look at it. It was a massive, hairy creature that was about seven feet tall. It had huge, razor-sharp claws like a bear's. Its eyes glowed red when the flashlight shined on them. Alex shot at it, and it darted off with one final screech. We all looked at each other in pure terror, shock, and surprise. Alex explained everything to our parents. They didn't know what to make of it and had never heard of anything like it. I'm thankful nothing happened to us, and that I noticed the creature behind us. If I hadn't, one of the others might not have noticed it until it was too late. The next time I stay at that cabin, I'm not going alone into those woods at night. What's up, guys? Gasly Ghoul here, and thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to take the time to thank you all for your support. Your comments, likes, and subscriptions mean the world to me. It's a great feeling for me to make content that you like and that entertains you. Also, I apologize for dropping off the radar for a while. I've just been having some hard time motivating myself for a variety of reasons, but I feel I'm back in the swing of things now. My goal is to be more frequent with my video uploads. So, if you did like the video, it'd be great if you would click the thumbs up button, comment and share it with your friends. And please consider joining the Ghastly Gang by hitting that subscribe button. If you would like for me to narrate your scary story, please send it to my email address below, or post it on the Free Horse Stories subreddit. Also, please follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook so you can keep up to date with what's happening on the channel. The links are below. And now, we must part ways, my friends. I fear you are living on borrowed time, for you'll never truly escape from the vault. <laughs>